the people in Kurdistan, in fact, are much more progressive than the people who are in power. This is a contradiction in itself. Just through the campaigns that we had against imposition of Islamic Sharia law in the Kurdish constitution, constitution as well as this campaign to make Dua's case known, we had so much response from people in Kurdistan, men and women, it was overwhelming. It was really thousands of people have written to us, have supported the campaigns we've doing, we've done, and they just want to see an end to all this violence against women, to all this brutalization and dehumanization of women. Thousands of people supported our campaign. Hundreds of writers, poets, and basically um, artists, and all kind of people, journalists in Kurdistan, they supported the campaign for ending violence against women, ending honor killing. But the only people who doesn't support and who don't listen is the government. So they are the only people who are responsible for the killing of women, for the terrorization of women under the name of honor and basically all kind of things. They are the ones who don't try to change this situation, who don't change the laws. In fact, they are trying to implement Islamic Sharia law, which is going to make the situation of women much worse. Um, stoning is going to become a daily practice if that gets uh, implemented. In the Iraq, is, if, we, if I just go and speak about it a little bit, the situation is far more worse. It's deteriorating. The Islamist militias are taking over right now. They are running the society over there. And they kidnap people, they behead women, they basically uh, bringing back all these issues of sirah, entertainment, marriages. They can marry a woman for half an hour, two hours, as long as they wish to, which is to me, it's an Islamic version of prostitution, if I name it that way. You know, it's degrading to, to treat women like that. I just got a record the other day, a woman with her two brothers, they were kidnapped from a small town in, um, near Kirkuk. She's, she's the one who survived somehow, but they were kidnapped by an Islamist militia and they were beaten to death. Her two brothers basically didn't survive, they were dead. But she hardly could speak, she's in, half in coma. She said this Islamist militia, they were uh, speaking about implementing Islamic Sharia law and Islamic rule and if we don't want to listen, this is going to happen. So it's all about terrorizing. The government is terrorizing us, the Islamist militias are terrorizing women, and basically um, that's how this backward reactionary culture, if I, do, if I wanna call it culture, which in my opinion, violence against women and so-called honor killing and female genital mutilation and all these other things that comes with it, it's not a culture, it's politics. It's politics behind it, it's governments behind it, there are political parties behind it, because the, the government itself in Kurdistan is based on tribal, um, tribal uh, norms and values, as well as Islamic uh, values and ethics that run the society. And this is our main problem here in Kurdistan. We continue to, to suffer from all these problems, and yet women's issues, women's rights and, and equalities is something just to be made the sub-issues, not the issues of the day, not the priority. And uh, you know, women get killed by their husbands, ex-husbands, brothers, fathers, and nobody is actually um, following up. Nobody is actually taking any procedures or bring the killers to justice. If Dua and all this work that we've done for her, if the government is still doesn't want to listen and bring the killers to justice, then you know, then who is responsible? I'm telling you that it's religion in the first place, it's the governments whose laws and, and, and politics are based on Islam and religion. It's basically tribalism in some sense because Dua was from this tribe, from so-called Yazidi faith, and she was just so-called meant to be married or fall in love with someone from the same particular tribe. I don't know how can you tell someone to fall in love with a particular person. You know, how can you define for somebody to live with your terms, to live with your own as if I am the one who is going to marry someone. This is how women are actually um, living in that region. And that's what we are up against. If I tell you, people like me, people like us are survivors of that situation. And that, that's why we are speaking out. We are speaking against all these uh, brutalities that women are subjected to. Women are being dehumanized in that region. And we don't want that to continue. What we want is to end this era and to bring about freedom, equality, and basically separating religion from the state and education system. We want to have a civil law in Iraq and in Kurdistan whereby people are treated equally. And this patriarchy, religious patriarchy, should 
be ended as well. And I always say as well that women in the mid Middle East are the first who should stand up for their own rights and who should denounce and expose all forms of violence uh, and religious oppression that we have been subjected to. 